Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! While the government continues to insist that it will not be offering a running commentary on Brexit, as we've just seen, yesterday David Davis, well, he gave us a bit of a running commentary on Brexit. Uh, he suggested that the UK might continue to make payments to the EU even after our departure, if that was what was required to secure the best possible access to the single market. The sex Secretary of State for exiting the EU was taking questions from MPs about how long the UK would keep on contributing to the EU budget. Let's have a look at the exchanges. This is a general question, so it gives him plenty of scope to give some sort of response. Will the government consider making any contribution in any shape or form for access to the single market? The major criterion here is that we get the best possible access for goods and services to the European market. And if, that's, if that is included in what he's talking about, then of course we would consider it. Oh. Bone. Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, of course, one of the decisions I suppose the government has to make is when we stop paying the, the money to the European Union or whether we then ask for it back. So, I mean, one of the negotiations could be, well, any money that we paid after the 23rd of June to the European Union should come back to us. I mean, if that's one of the positions, is it not? <laughs> this money is British money. It will come back to us. We'll decide what to do with it. Does the Secretary of State understand why the House is getting a little fed up yeah, yeah, with yeah. being told nothing? Absolutely. And if he does, can he tell us when the government will come forward with its plans for Brexit, yeah, yeah. including on what will happen as regards any future contributions to the European Union after we have left? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The uh, approach to this, the probable success uh, of the negotiations depend very greatly on us, be able, be, us being able to manage the information and keep what it needs to be secret until the last minute secret. EU Brexit negotiators have been very clear about their intent to pursue the UK for an exit bill of anything up to 60 billion euro based on an expansive interpretation of our liabilities <laughs> under the EU budget. These are colossal sums of money and the British public deserve to know from their government how accurate they are. So can the Secretary of State tell the House how much his department estimates it will cost to settle our outstanding liabilities of part, as part of a future withdrawal agreement? We have seen from the European Union an opening bid. That's what it is. There's nothing more than that. An opening bid to put the maximum price on departure from the Union. Uh, and frankly, I'm not going to, if you'll forgive me, I'm not going to engage in sort of chipping away at that bid or whatever. We'll start from scratch when we go in that door uh, in, uh, after March when the negotiation starts. That was uh, David Davis in the Conservative MP and Leave supporter Peter Bone joins us now. Welcome back to the programme. Is David Davis going a bit soft? <laughs> he was sticking to the, the line. The line was we're going to, uh, that money's our money, uh, 15 billion or whatever it is each year that we're supposed to give to the EU. It's going to be our money and we'll decide how to spend it. But this wasn't the line. This was a new line. We had never heard a government minister before say that we may continue to pay, make some contributions to the European Union in return for certain rights of, as he was talking about, access uh, to the market. That was new. But that's how you interpreted what he said. I, I was in there for an hour and a bit, and uh, if you take one sentence from one answer he gives, you can, you're going to... I think the problem is there is no running commentary, so people take one sentence and interpret it. The fact is, if that had been the case, that would have been a negotiating position. Mm. Therefore, he, 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 well, he has to say that nothing is ruled out. But he didn't say, he went further than that. I mean, you say you were there, uh, but maybe you had 40 winks at this point when he uh, <laughs> was... Uh, and it was he getting was, boring. Uh, he, he was, yeah, well, I think you've just made my point. Uh, he was asked by uh, the Labour MP, Wayne David, will the government consider making any contribution in any shape or form for access to the single market? Now, in my default position, I would have expected Mr Davis to fudge the answer to that. 
but he didn't. He said the major criterion here is that we get the best possible access to the European market. And if that is included, that being a contribution in any shape or form in what you're talking about, then of course we will consider it. Yes, but That's he, clear. He, he could not have said no to that because that would have then have been a negotiating position and now you would have had your first thing. You say, ah, we already know that we're not going to pay any money for access. To the well, he, could. We're not, he could have done, Excuse but that's me, you not... You went round in this bus telling us how much we give to the European Union every week. The contribution issue was a huge campaign. Yeah. So are you now saying that, that what was on that bus was there for, oh, we can't confirm that because it would reveal our negotiating position. In well, my view, what I would do, of course, I would say we are not going to give any money to the European Union. That was my position and Go's position. That wasn't my bus. But, um, but the point is, the, the, Theresa May has set a stance in saying we're not going to reveal our hand until we've done the no. negotiations. But and that's why all these problems and all, all these inferences occur. But on that bus was the £350 million pounds that your side claimed went to the European uh, Union. Now, of course, that figure wasn't right. It didn't take into account the rebate. It didn't take into account the money that comes back to this country as part of EU spending. But nevertheless, there is a figure. I put it to you that the more that figure, whatever the right number is, is used to continue to pay contributions, yeah. then the NHS should put away its begging bowl because there ain't going to be any money for well, it. Well, you're absolutely right. And, and I think the figure is probably more like £10 billion a year, which is a net net figure. Right. But you're absolutely right. And that's why I don't think there's any chance of any contribution for coming into the, what would be the internal market. And the reason I say that is not in the European Union's interest to have a problem because we have a £70 billion trade deficit with them. If anyone should be paying anything to access a market, maybe it should be the European Union to access the fifth biggest economy in the world. I would have a 10p bet with you that there is no chance that we will put any money so towards becoming part 10p. of 10p. Well, it's not going Ta to be... It's not times, going to... times are that bad in the bone household. I'm afraid. It's not going to be of, a euro. What kind of um, bet will you put on the <coughs> Europeans paying us? Because I don't think they're going to pay us to access our market. Uh, no. Well, I think, actually, the bet that will be the best bet okay. is that it's going to be a free trade agreement but across so, the board. So possible payments into the single market, maybe some low skilled migration, still keeping the European Court of Justice mm -hmm. in some areas as the ultimate arbitration court. Remain has lost the referendum but they're winning the war aren't they? Well there's a vacuum isn't there because of the fact that other people who want to leave are not saying what their position is i.e. the government and there is anything that Remain side says gets the airwaves and I no, don't... No, these are positions that the government is signalling they are open to. Well, David Davis said last night, we don't want to see any migration control that hurts the economy or hurts... Oh, no, on migration. That, I think there's clear on migration. We've always, be, we've always yeah. said that there's, it's, we will be immigration from the European Union, but it'll be controlled. And I don't think mm. that, that that position has changed. So I think we can part that one and say that that is absolutely... And that's what people well. wanted, ending free movement, but proper... Control. Well, he said, Mr Davis, no one <coughs> wants to see labour shortages in key sectors. Yes. He said at a meeting I was at that Britain will not opt out of the international competition for talent as well. So if you add this up, no guarantee <coughs> that our EU contributions are going to end. A more small L liberal stance on immigration than we had been led to believe. And perhaps even if we're making contributions to, the, to, to Europe, that the European Court of Justice will have some jurisdiction over certain areas of this uh, country. Sounds to me that this is slipping away from well, you. Well, you make Sam's point. This is what happens in the vacuum. One side puts its story out. The truth of the matter is we will end free movement. We won't be spending money, sending money to the EU. But I can't prove that because the government is not willing to announce its position. Now, do I think perhaps we should have a, a statement sometime from the government saying much more firmly what the broad position is, i.e. that we were going to have controlled migration, that we will not be spending billions of pounds to the EU. Yes, that probably would be a good thing. Are you expecting to get a vote on matters like this, on whether or not we would continue to make some kind of contribution to the Brussels budget? As it goes through the parliamentary process, I mean, the triggering of, triggering of Article 50, I think, is as of right, because the British people voted for that, to say we are going to come out. But the detail absolutely has to be determined by Parliament. That's mm. what we would expect, and there'll be endless debates. So if, my, if I had my way, I'd take the time limit off and we could debate through the night.
Very well. <laughs> well, we've then we would get <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> we've uh, we've been up all night, uh, so there's nothing new to us. So we could be there as well to have Looking Brexit. Forward. <laughs> and then breakfast. <laughs> or maybe the other way around. It's quite hard to know which. Peter Bond, thank you very thank much you. Uh, for being with us. I've been